Greetings, welcome to the channel, I'm Eddie Set Go, and in this video we're riding this, the stunning Triumph T100. So here we have the stunning Triumph, the classically inspired Triumph T100. This is Triumph taking all of that passion and love for the heritage and pouring it into this classic roadster motorcycle design. It's not pretending to be you know, anything modern with a modern twist or anything hipster like that. This is very much a bike celebrating where they came from. At its heart is that 900cc high torque Bonneville twin engine. I actually rode the previous generation of this engine in the street twin uh, and absolutely fell in love with it. I will actually go on record to say that it is perhaps one of my favourite motorcycle engines that I've uh, experienced. This uh, new generation for 2021 is four kilograms lighter than the previous gen. It generates 65 brake horsepower at about 7,400 RPM and it also generates about 80 newton meters of torque at 3,700 RPM and that's very much the story. There's plenty of grunt accessible low down in the rev range which means you don't really have to work the engine to tap into all that power making it very user friendly and easy to ride. And also, because this engine is now Euro 5 compliant, it is also A2 friendly as well. So if you're looking to jump into the world of motorcycling, looking for a big bike to ride, you can de-restrict this and jump on the T100. Just love all of these details. There's so much metal on this bike. It's very hard to find any kind of plastic. Nice fin detailing coming out from the downpipes along these horizontal style twin exhausts with the pea shooter end cans. They really give it a nice rasp, but this bike really does have a thunderous tone. It sounds like there's a, a thunderstorm off in the distance when you fire it up. It's really cool. Other details include these multi-spoke wheels, which look great, these polished spokes. Coming around to the cockpit view, we have these beautiful twin clocks, which are surrounded by chrome bezels. These are not plastic. I was just talking about all of the metal you've got. You've also got this wonderful big Triumph badge either side of the petrol tank again, which is metal, there's no plastic. But don't let this fool you. There's a lot of classic looking heritage design into this bike, but it also has quite a number of mod cons, including things like ABS, traction control. It's also got a torque assist clutch whilst you're in traffic. Hopefully it should be a nice light action on that left hand. Other modern conveniences include, we've got a Brembo disc and a caliper at the front for improved stopping power. And we have a Nissan disc and caliper and the rear. Now the seat height is a very user-friendly 790 millimeters so at five foot eight inches tall I can get both feet to completely flat foot. Five foot eight inches tall I can get both feet flat on the floor which is always a novelty for me. In terms of weight the T100 isn't the lightest bike it weighs in about 213 kilograms I do believe um, fully fueled so it, it does have a bit of weight to it but the weight is quite low down. Uh, what I found is when I'm maneuvering this bike through the garage uh, it can take you by surprise away if it just jump off it can feel quite uh, low weight and tip over easily you've got to be really quite uh, get used to that weight but there is a very handy pillion strap to grab hold of as you're maneuvering the bike around so I wouldn't be too concerned about you know a little bit of extra weight to this bike it is dripping with metal there's just metal everywhere as I just mentioned in the start of the video let's fire it up got these wonderful twin clocks here it looks great in this brushed aluminium with the triumph logo in the middle <laughs> really lovely engine it kind of thuds and vibrates through the bike but not vibrating in an annoying way and we are away and it is so easy to smile on this bike as soon as you jump on as soon as you're riding there's a grin on your face. I, I can't really explain why. <laughs> I can't really explain why right now. But uh, it's just like sitting on a kind of a living machine. The bike is kind of thuddering and just vibrating gently beneath you. 
and you're just surrounded by all of this metal shiny chrome polished metal let me just turn around i was going to go back the other way down this road here again look at that just doing quick u-turns on the bike is easy as anything there's a great turning circle on this bike to uh to maneuver in and out of those tight corners and spaces at very low speed But yes, it's so easy to smile on this bike. I can't explain it. I'm not going at a thousand miles an hour. I'm not diving into corners and, you know, trying to get as much lean out of the bike as possible. I'm just literally cruising down the road at what, 50, 40 miles an hour. And it's just, it's great. It's, it's not, uh, the, the engine sound is, has a really nice tone. It's not pressing on the ears. In terms of riding position, um, it's, it's very comfortable. I'd say it's perhaps not as sport focused as the Street Twin, even though the Street Twin isn't a sports bike in any way, shape or form, but obviously that shares the same engine platform as the T100. But the Street Twin, I think, is a bit more perchy. You're kind of perched a bit more. There's a bit more of a modern focus to the, the Roadster experience. But with this T100, you're laid back, you're sitting upright. There's very much more weight on your butt than there is. There's hardly any weight at all. There's no weight whatsoever on these, uh, on my wrists. The bars are really nice and wide and kind of tapering towards you. There's loads of padding in this seat with a huge pillion seat as well. So if you are going to be taking someone on the back, I think you'll be both of you very comfortable riding this for prolonged uh, distances. And uh, yeah, the seating position, the clocks and the, 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 the headlamp face, all of this kind of activity at the front here is quite up and forward. You feel like you're sitting into the bike. You feel like you're surrounded. It's almost a kind of a cruiser riding position, but again, it's not really. It's not really a cruiser, but you're feeling like you're in the bike and you've got these big clock faces up in front of you. And I love seeing just the, the crest of that headlight just in front of the clocks there. But this is what the T100 is all about. I'm just cruising along here in these little country village roads. I'm not trying to set a best lap time or anything. This is just about cruising along, enjoying what's going on around you, enjoying the ride, and doing it in a manner that's extremely comfortable. Earlier in the channel, you might see other videos where I've ridden the Street Twin, I've ridden the Speed Twin, and uh, both of those are ex extremely comfortable bikes, a bit more of a contemporary heritage bike. You know, there is a bit more of a perch in those riding positions, a bit more of a roadster focus, but this is very laid back. I've not ridden the Speedmaster yet, so that's perhaps going to be even more laid back than this. But yeah, this is so comfy. And the suspension is doing a great job of just smoothing things out. These roads are notoriously bumpy. But I'm not feeling any discomfort or vibration at all. I mean, these really are bad roads around here, and this is super comfortable. It's like I'm riding on a, a duvet. It's like I'm sat on a duvet and it's just kind of cruising along through the countryside. This is great. Uh, the mirrors, we've got lovely chrome mirrors here which are super functional. I've got loads of visibility behind me. I can see a tiny bit, perhaps an eighth of what I see in the mirror is my uh, shoulder. But the rest of it, perfect amount of view there to see behind me. Uh, the switch gears, I also talk about the switch gears in my reviews. They're a good indicator as to the quality of what you touch and feel. And it is quite minimal on the switch gears. There's usually lots of buttons and things on these modern bikes, but here it's very minimal. We have an information button here. We can flip between different sets of information. Uh, we can't uh, change things like riding modes or anything. It does have traction control, ABS, but uh, it's pretty much what you get. You've got the kill switch down here, uh, hazard lights button down here. We have our indicators turn signal switch on the left hand side as usual with a horn. And that is it. It's uh, in no way distracting, which means if you're a new rider, jumping on this for the first time is your first big bike. You're not going to be phased or confused or overwhelmed by all of the stuff that you can do with a bike. It's, you very much jump on this machine and just focus on the ride rather than the gadgetry. We have a torque assist clutch here on the left hand, and uh, I've only used it a couple of times, but yeah, it's super light, just super light to just use. That's great. I remember when I took my uh, my riding test, it was an old Honda CB500 do my uh, my bike test when I learnt many moons ago. And the, uh, the clutch lever on it was slightly stiff, shall we say. And I think by the end of my lessons and the test, 
I had really bad carpal tunnel syndrome from trying to pull the clutch lever. But with this, uh, with this T100, that's super. Just one finger using the clutch there. Really comfortable. This is so nice. In terms of the peg position, I've not mentioned the pegs. They are rather, they're not high. There is a very comfortable bend in the knee. And on the pegs as well, what I do like is it has a rubber kind of mounting on top of the peg, which gives you a little indicator as to what the, the bike is all about. There's a little bit of comfort on those pegs just to absorb some of those vibrations that you might feel. Oh, this is so comfortable. What a beautiful bike. I really, I can't explain it. It's such a, it, that's what I love about biking. All of these bikes bring something different. You know, my MT-09, I love my MT-09. It's, uh, you know, it's aggressive and it's, it's fast and all of those, you know, it's technologically advanced and all of that kind of good stuff. But here we have this classically designed, classically inspired heritage machine, you know, which is perhaps very much the quintessential modern heritage bike that you can buy on the road. There's a number of manufacturers doing their own spin on, you know, with bikes where they came from, the Kawasaki W800, for example. But um, I think it's it going to be hard to argue that Triumph do the heritage stuff better than anyone. Uh, having ridden their machines over the past year and been very, you know, very lucky to ride their machines over the past year, I really appreciate just the effort and the passion and the excitement they have for these heritage machines. But uh, you might be thinking 65 uh, brake horsepower-ish um, at about 7,000 RPM and uh, 80 Newton meters of torque at three, three and a half thousand, 3,007, I think it is. Is that enough power, you might be asking? I think it's absolutely plenty of power, especially for a bike like this, a modern heritage bike. You can just watch, so here we go, we're at 3,000 revs. I think we're in third gear. It might not sound like it because the engine's purring along so low, but let's just twist the throttle. Third gear, 3,000 RPM. You just pull the throttle wide open, the needle goes up, and already, straight away, within seconds, you're at the national speed limit. There's so much pickup in this engine. They don't call it high torque for nothing. It does have that little high torque HT stamp on the side of the engine there. So exciting, look at that. Second gear, loads of power just to pull up. And it accelerates so effortlessly and uh, even though the needle starts going up to the, the red line, and I think this particular engine, the new generation engine, does have a 500 RPM higher red line than the previous gen. As you climb up that red line, the, the engine doesn't start to scream at you or protest or make you know insane wailing noises that a lot of bikes do nowadays to kind of let you know that you are reaching that red line. It's like the engine just kind of goes into this quiet zen state of calm as you start reaching those higher revs. And it's very easy just to go quickly on this bike because the engine is so cool and calm about it and collected you can pull the throttle and the next thing you know you're at motorway speeds within seconds just brake single finger braking there on that Brembo front just a single disc at the front with the Brembo caliper but it's plenty enough to uh, to bring you to a stop oh, I love that sound what a beautiful sound stock pipes those pea shooter horizontal exhaust pipes. In terms of changing gear, there's no uh, quick shifter or anything like that. It is a straight up uh, manual gearbox. I do believe it's a five speed gearbox as well. Yes, it is a five speed gearbox. Uh, the gearbox, the, the gear lever itself is super snappy. There's loads of feel coming through that as you're changing up and down the gears. In terms of the clock displays up front, they are super clear and easy to read. We've got our speedometer on the left, revometer on the right. There is an LCD display beneath both clocks displaying bits of information like we've got the gear that we're in. Uh, we've got our trip and uh, odometer on the left hand side. On the right, we've got our range of fuel, how much is in the tank. While we've pulled up uh, to a stationary position. Let's just look at the acceleration on this bike. This is a, you know, a heritage roadster, but still got that wonderful engine. Let's just, uh, just pull away and that clutch is so nice. So calm, it's such a calm experience when you accelerate hard on this bike and instantly you're up to, you know, national speed limit motorway speeds effortlessly. But in terms of the power delivery, it's not eye-watering. You're not hanging on for dear life. This is a very calm and tempered 
um, acceleration experience on this bike it is plenty enough to enjoy and be safe on the road and have fun as well even though this is a classic heritage looking bike a classic heritage machine you still can have fun and enjoy the roads and cruise along effortlessly at the national speed limit the motorway speeds it is so uh, so easy to do and uh, because I'm sat quite in the bike these clocks are here there is no screen on the bike now because I'm quite sat in it, I'm surrounded by this beautiful teardrop um, fuel tank uh, there's not a lot of wind blast on me it's not a very windy day today but compared to other nakeds that I've ridden I do feel quite protected from the elements I think that's because I'm not perched over the bike. I'm so used to riding roadsters where there's a lot of weight on the front end, the bars are forward, the uh, the seat is kind of perching you and pushing you forward into that uh, that roadster kind of riding position. But with this, you're kind of sitting low down, your butt is low, the seat is low to the ground. You've got these big clocks and all of this stuff in front of you. You feel quite protected. so easy fourth gear just down into second there's a bit of the rear brake just tipping the bike in again it's been raining here the roads are quite uh, damp it's the worst condition kind of road to go riding in because they can be quite deceiving you think oh it's quite dry but it's got that horrible kind of autumnal film on the road which makes it super slippery for bikes but in saying that I'm very feel very comfortable riding this bike and opening up the throttle I know that there's traction control on this machine so it will kick in if I do need it there's been no warning lights or anything yet bring it around there again these are super bumpy roads but I can't feel anything it's, <laughs> it's so it's so comfy I think if you take a pillion on the back of this bike they're going to be probably falling asleep after a while because it's just like a sitting on a kind of a soft armchair and even at slow speed, I'm in second gear there, just going at really, really slow speeds, 20 miles an hour through that corner. You can hear the engine kind of chug, 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 chug as you go around the corner. It's like the bike is kind of purring. And with the, uh, the weight of this machine, I did you know, talk about the weight of the bike just before we set off. It, you know, it is a heavier bike compared to others, but there is a lot more metal on this bike and the weight is quite low down. As I'm riding, I'm not feeling the weight at all. If anything, coming out of corners, uh, just tipping into corners, you can feel the weight a little bit. As you come out, the bike just not, likes to correct itself. It uses that low center of gravity to help get you back upright, making it very effortless. So you're just there, just hit, as you hit that, uh, three and a half thousand four thousand rpm in second gear so you hit that three four thousand rpm band where that torque that peak torque starts to kick in you really do feel the bike pick up just there so you feel that uh, that pick up in power and what that means is in this city especially these in this city urban areas if you're at the traffic lights in a big city you're at the front of the queue there's loads of low down grunt there to uh keep you ahead of the traffic and keep you making good progress as they say in all the tests you can make certainly make good progress on the bike and do it in awesome heritage style just using the front and rear brake there's plenty of stopping power and bite on these uh, the Brembo front and the Nissan rear discs and calipers there's certainly plenty of bite to uh, to keep you in control, I wouldn't be concerned about, uh, you know, a lot of bikes have dual discs on the front now, don't they? But no, this has got a single, and I love the fact that it exposes the spokes on the other side of the rim on the wheel, so I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be concerned about the, the stopping power on this machine. We're nipping through the traffic here, so if you are using the bike, the T100 on a commute, you're thinking, is the bike nimble enough to get around the traffic? I don't think you'll have any issues at all. There's so much turning circle on this bike, and... Uh, because the weight is quite low down, it's not, you're not going to feel toppling over if you start making little tight cuts in and out of the, the cars and the vans and the trucks. And what I also like is that first gear. Um, it's quite a lot of first gears on bikes are quite uh, aggressive. You know, the bike can kind of you can easily kangaroo, buckaroo a bit of a bike in first gear. There's lots of sharp 
acceleration, deceleration, engine braking in a first gear. But this, uh, the first gear on the T100, on this 900cc high torque twin, it's you can sit in first gear, navigate through the traffic. There's no sudden jolts or jerks. It's very a soft power delivery, even even in first. Just cruising along here at uh, what 55 miles an hour right now. It's so easy. It's so easy. The only wind resistance I'm feeling right now is perhaps at the top of my shoulders. Just second gear here, just, just going into this corner. Just tipping the bike over. That low centre of gravity, it kind of just helps keep the bike go back up to upright as you exit the corner. You're not having to fight to get the bike back up. I recently rode the uh, Yamaha Tracer, Tracer 9 GT, which is a, a purpose sports touring bike with a huge screen massive screen but the turbulence coming off the top of the screen it sounded like when you open uh, the sunroof on a car but you keep the windows closed and it does that kind of oh, da, 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 sound and it really buffets inside and really messes with your uh, it really messes with your uh, your senses and that was a, a purpose sports touring bike and doing 70 miles an hour 80 miles an hour I could feel so much turbulence but here I am on this naked heritage roadster from Triumph and I'm doing, you know, 60 miles an hour, 70 miles an hour, 70 miles an hour. I'm just, I can feel a bit of wind just on my chest. Oh, what a beautiful experience. It really is. I'm really just impressed with this bike. I wasn't too sure at first. I really do love my, my sporty roadsters. I was a little bit hesitant thinking, you know, would I be able to see the joy in this bike? But as soon as you put your leg over it, you're like, oh my God, this is awesome. You know. This is a beautiful machine that's capable. It's a little bit of a wolf in sheep's clothing, but uh, it's not going to uh, it's not going to terrify you. It's a bike that you know lets you enjoy the journey with it. You know, it's gonna take you on the road, keep you safe, and do it in style. So you know, you asked the question I did mention at the start of the ride. The bike does weigh in at about 9,300 pounds here in the UK. I think probably looking just shy of $10,000 over in the US. You know, is it worth that amount of money? And I think that, I'm gonna say, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna say, yes, it is worth that in terms of what you get for your money. You get a bike dripping in metal. You've got an absolute flawless, robust, reliable, an engine full of, full of very calm character. You've got uh, uh, absolutely thousands of modification options that you can do to this bike to make it your own. And a bike that you can easily eat up so many miles, you know, exploring and touring. So there you have a quick first ride review of the Triumph T100 for 2021 and beyond. What do you think about this wonderful heritage machine is this bike on your radar please drop a comment below join the discussion i think for me i am just really surprised at how this bike just makes you smile it doesn't do it in an aggressive fast heart pumping way it does it in a way that you know you're enjoying the ride you're enjoying the quality the finishing touches of this bike you feel at one with it and it's really it feels really safe and calm at speed when i first took delivery of the bike i was a bit concerned as to whether i would see the, the fun and excitement of this machine and as soon as you put your leg over it it's just the feeling the weight and the metal how well it's put together that progressive power delivery you know, this is a bike that could easily eat thousands of miles so there you have quick first ride of the t100 for 2021 and beyond uh, i hope you've enjoyed this review if you have please give a thumbs up to support the channel your support is always appreciated and if you are new around here then please make sure to subscribe to see future bike videos uh, in the meantime i've been Eddie set go i hope you ride safe and stay safe i'll see you next time